my dogs are playing and they keep barking. I just, why? Why does this happen? You turn on the camera and your dogs can't stop barking. I don't know what to do. Hello everyone, it is Jazz here. Today I'm doing the 2019 edition of the Year End Books Superlative Tag. This is a tag created by a book olive. I will link you to her couple of videos of this tag in the description if you want to check it out. But I just think this is a really great tag that I like to end the year on, even though I accidentally skipped last year. Sorry, 2018. I choose to do this tag solely because I'm not the kind of person that's great at making decisions and I tend to rate books highly so I can't really do a favorite books of the year video comfortably and I also don't like doing a least favorite books of the year thing but I think this tag is a great way to show a general scope of the types of books that I read over the year. So we're going to jump in to the superlative type questions and let's go for it. Number one, most likely to be in the movies, the book that would make the best movie. So I have a couple of choices and a lot of these, I'm sorry, I do have more than one choice for the answer. I apologize for that ahead of time. But the first choice that I have, I don't know that anyone would actually make a movie of this, but I think it would be cool, you know? And it's Toil and Trouble. This is a retelling of Macbeth in graphic novel form, but it's from the perspective of the three witches in Macbeth. I also read Macbeth this year, but I, you know, read it after I reread this one. I just want to see like the special effects. I want to see this perspective. Like it would just be one that would be cool. But my second choice is also something that I think could actually be made into a movie quite easily. And I would equally enjoy seeing. And that would be Sadie by Courtney Summers. It's more of a revenge sort of thriller type type of book and I love a revenge thriller with all my heart and I think it would be very in inexpensive to make this into a movie and it's also a very popular book so it seems likely that somebody could be inspired to make it into a film. I don't know if that will ever happen but I think it would be cool. Number two biggest drama queen slash king the most over dramatic book. I decided overall to give this one to Hot Gimmick, which is a manga series. I believe I read the omnibus volumes of volumes two through four during the year of 2019. I think the first one I read in 2018. The reason why I have to say this is the most melodramatic of all the books that I've read is because it is the stuff of soap operas. I was trash for the first two volumes. For some reason I liked them even though I felt definitely guilty pleasure conflicted about them. Volumes three and four straight up like wanted to kind of throw them in the garbage <laughs> just because they romanticized a really abusive relationship and I just I couldn't with it after the fourth volume where it ended and just how the whole series ends in volume four um so also I would say that the over dramaticness stemmed from my over dramatic reaction I don't remember if I threw the fourth volume across the room for like real but I wanted two. I probably didn't because it was a library book, but I, I desperately wanted to, y'all. So my reaction to it was over dramatic. Number three, best dress, the book with the best cover. So I decided to go with the cover of Five Feet Apart by Rachel Limpincott, which is obviously sort of a tie-in with the film Five Feet Apart, which I still haven't watched. I've only read the book. But this not only has a extremely beautiful cover, but also this cover holds a special place in my heart because I did a challenge video where I recreated the elements of this book cover on my face for the final biannual bibliothon. And I ended up winning the makeup challenge for that day. So I enjoyed this book. I love the book cover. And I also love that like it really is associated with like a good experience, even though this book made me cry like a freaking baby. Number four, most 
creative, the book with the most unique plot, characters, or structure. So I have a couple for this one. First off, Kings and Queens of Rome by Daniel Wallace. This is a magical realism book. It is super weird, but in like the best way. It's about two sisters one sister is blind and the other sister is not very good looking in appearance and basically it's about their relationship and how those two things affect their sisterhood and it goes to some crazy places it's also kind of about a town and how the town they live in was sort of like created and how that kind of filters into the relationships of the characters as well. I can't really explain this book because it is so out there, but it is so different than anything that you read. And it's just a really cool kind of inventive story. My second choice would be My Favorite Thing is Monsters by Emile Ferris. So this is a graphic novel, but it is like drawn in such a different way and the way it mixes genres because it's a historical novel and it is also a social commentary and it also has sort of some allegory going on with how like the element of sort of like monsters and how we view monsters and how humans can kind of be monstrous. So interesting and the way it's structured is so interesting and yes. I will also say it is deep. It will tear your heartstrings out. So if you're in the mood to read something sad, this is the book for you. <laughs> Number five, the most popular book, the book with the most ratings on Goodreads. So according to my 2019 year in books on Goodreads, they say that the most popular book with the most ratings is Twilight, which I reread and I ended up listening to an audiobook during this reread because I've reread it many times because honestly, I like Twilight. I know some people are down on it. I get it, but I enjoy it because I think the characters have a weird dry humor and I think it's amusing. Number six, most likely to succeed, the book that is going to be appreciated for many years to come. Yet again, couple of answers. Well, I didn't start the manga series Fruits Basket in 2019. I started it in the year before. I ended up completing it in its entirety in the year of 2019 and I adore it with all my heart and it's just one of my favorite mangas that I've finished or manga series that I've finished so far and I just, it's too good for this world. I completed Wonder and it's the most endearing, sincere sort of book in the world and any age can enjoy it. So I will definitely probably be rereading Wonder in the future because I love it. I'm holding up the dust jacket right now because my mom is reading it and I hope that she likes it as much as I do. Number seven, Class Clown, the book you could not help but laugh at. I'm gonna give this one to Tim Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is a holiday book and it's basically about a girl that gets set up on 10 blind dates by her family members and it is a kick and a half. Those blind dates are usually pretty hilarious and situational comedy is my jam. Number eight, most improved. The book that started off slow but really picked up. I tend to not think of this as books that started off slow. I'm gonna approach this answer from books that started off where I wasn't sure if I was going to like them and then I ended up liking them in the end. I didn't love them but I ended up liking them and they like improved in that way because that's how I kind of view most improved. So I do have two yet again would be Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. So this book was more of a writing sort of thing where I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it. Um, I know this book is kind of polarizing in general and I think some of it has to do with the characters but I understood where she was going with the characters. In terms of the writing though I was unsure because it just felt like it was written in this really weird way at the front and then also the writing was like trying so hard to like be a novel at the front and 
I felt like as the story progressed, the author relaxed into her writing style and it wasn't it was a little less try hard. And then also I felt like I understood what she was trying to do with the writing and it didn't like weird me out. It was just I had to get used to it. Other book I would say that I had a similar I'm not sure if I'm going to like this feeling at the front of it was Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This was more of a character thing. I feel like at the front of the book the characters were very one-dimensional and then of course as the story progressed they developed the characters better and they started to be less like meh to me <laughs> and I actually started to care about them uh, whereas with friend I was like I'm not sure I care about any of these people why and I actually ended up enjoying Aurora Rising more than I enjoyed Illuminate which I also read in 2019 um, mostly because of the structure and like things like that. I still have problems with both of those books uh, even though I did give Aurora Rising <laughs> four stars because for some reason with Amy Kaufman, J. Kristoff books or the two that I've read I just feel like I'm reading Firefly for teenagers. Like they've just restructured an episode of Firefly for teenagers um, and also maybe thrown in a little Star Trek and things in there. I just can't unsee the influences. I think if I could I would enjoy them even more but I just I can't. I can't not see them. But I still ended up enjoying Aurora Rising and would read the next book in the series which comes out in 2020. Number nine, cutest couple. The two main characters, Sawako and I think it's Shoto from the manga Kimi ni Todoki. Uh, I've only read to volume six of this so I'm not sure if it's gonna develop to anything past crushy friendship <laughs> but I would really be happy if it does and they're so flipping adorable because he's like super popular and she's not popular at all and people think that she's weird but he like befriends her and then like other people want to be her friend because he's her friend and it's just oh my heart it's too cute the last question is biggest heartbreaker book the book that broke your heart yet again two answers first one is of course me before you because I cried like a freaking baby <laughs> um, and I was like nobody look at me like nobody enter this room because I'm having a moment here and yeah that happened I also will say that needful things by Stephen King like broke me in like a weird weird way it made me just feel sadness and hopelessness and it was very hard for me to read it's not a bad book by any means but just the general overall tone and I, I guess that should be expected with a Stephen King book but I still feel like a lot of the Stephen King books that I've read have not made me feel such a sense of hopelessness gosh needful things I'm only reading you once but I'm glad that I read you so that was the 2019 edition of the year in book superlative tag I think the general theme of 2019 after doing this tag is that I read a lot of manga and I also read a lot more popular books that are like popular books on booktube than I normally do because I utilized the library for both of those things and so I'm really proud of my use of the library skills but it also means I'm gonna have to put a ton of pictures in this video so <laughs> wacky fun anyway drop me a comment below with your thoughts on either this video or any of the books mentioned in this video and let me know some of your favorite reads from 2019 and that is it for the day my fabulous peeps I will see you all soon